Welcome to the future. Thank you so much, Arvid and Marie, for bringing us together in 2161. I hope you all had a good travel. Um, I took a little bit of time to recompose, but here I am. For those who just join us now, I would like to give you a little bit of a recap of what has happened before. This is the second half of the second day of the second edition of the Urgency Intensive. And for this edition, we are proposing an object for discussion, a fictional meta-institution, the IPAC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Art and Climate Change, as an instigator for an exercise in long-term thinking and intergenerational accountability. This exercise has been structured for the past uh, morning in a series of conversations between a group enacting a parallel present. Now you join us in 2161, 140 years ahead, seven generations ahead of time to join the group of the future. This system for conversation and discussion is inspired by the Japanese decision-making uh, strategy and policy-making policy, policy -making strategy, uh, future designs. And um, it's my pleasure now to introduce Inga Latte, who I've been working for the past months to co-curate this event, who will give you more information about future designs. Yeah, uh, thank you, Bruno, and uh, hi, everyone. And uh, yeah, I hope we have some uh, new participants and some who have been uh, with us since uh, yesterday, perhaps, uh, since when we started the discussion and also this morning. Uh, but anyways, uh, to um, I will still try to wrap up a little bit about the future design and why and where, where does it kind of have its roots. So uh, this inclusion of the forthcoming generation in the decision making process has deep connections with the seventh generational uh, principle of indigenous cultures, which uh, urges the current generation uh, to live and work for the benefit of the seventh generation ahead, uh, which is about 140 years into the future. Um, as we are uh, now enacting, and uh, yeah, it uh, takes it. Uh, this notion takes uh, its root in the founding the document of the Iroquois Confederacy, a historical indigenous uh, confederacy in North America, and the oldest living participatory democracy on Earth, which is also really inspiring. Um, and it's also a common um, philosophy to many other uh, Native American uh, nations and indigenous peoples around the world. And uh, yeah, so to say that um, we, uh, and before we um, enter in the future, I think we've had uh, quite a, a lot of like layers in the discussion growing from yesterday to today. Um, and maybe what is important, um, what what uh, the question ha that has come up is like, uh, how how do we define uh, like uh, what kind of art are we talking about? Um, because I guess there are so many, you know, ways to understand it, and also uh, for it to, uh, and and also like maybe uh, different kind of art worlds that exist and also ways that it can change. And I think in the future, it's also interesting how, how it will like uh, change. And uh, yeah, and also when we think about the ecological crisis and the ecocide and the, the grief it has uh, created, it's also important to understand the potential that art can have with, a, with uh, being with uh, and, and with our mental kind of well-being and how we should be stranded between this um, rather valid like idea that uh, or, 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 or well-founded pessimism and fear um, of like what the climate crisis is bringing, but also finding certain kind of joy and optimism to actually go further and to kind of counter that. Um, and so I'm happy to see uh, what the future uh, discussion, which other layers it will bring, and uh, that, thus introducing the moderator of the uh, future group, uh, Prem Krishnamurti. And Prem is a designer, curator, uh, writer, and teacher uh, based in Berlin and New York. 
His projects across media address historical, contemporary, and speculative intersections of art and design, the politics of display, and experimental institutional formats, uh, presentational models, and collaborative frameworks. He currently directs workshops, a multidisciplinary design practice, and is an artistic director of Front International 2022, the Cleveland Triennial of Contemporary Art, and organizes Commune, an emergent multi-forum workshop that practices artistic tools for social transformation. Um, previously, Prem founded the Experimental Gallery P and the Design Studio Project Projects in New York. He uh, has received the Cooper Hewitt National Design Award for Communications Design in 2015 and uh, KW Institute for Contemporary Arts a year with the Residency Fellowship in 2018. So in March 2020, he started a live collaborative virtual event series called Present as part of the digital artist-led space Home Cooking, which I've had the pleasure to, to attend uh, also, and uh, yeah, his experimental ever-changing electronic book PDF is uh, also something that's interesting to check if you're interested. So without further ado, I give the floor to Prem. Hello. So thank you, Inga. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you, everyone. Hello from this now of 2161 CE, also known as 140 CEE. We're glad that the transmission technology appears to be working. We must mention again, we are all being translated back into the language you might still call English in your now of 2021 CE or 0 CEE. I hope that you will bear with any glitches, some things that might not be autolated correctly. Now, before we begin, we'd like to suggest a ritual that many of us practice in our now. We call it communing. We do something like this to start each gathering of us. There are many we's, but we are never apart unless we want to be. We don't know exactly how this will work with your ancient communications technology, but we will try. It's very simple. We would love if you join us for a moment. Ah, now we see. On your display at the Southwest, you may see an option for unmute. Please touch and press this. And, and you may, you may even, even see, see, see an option, option at Northwest North West to turn, to turn on, on the original, original, original sound. sound. Please, Please press, press, this. press this. Now, now we, we all, all close, close our eyes. And, and we can, we can place, place our, our hands, hands on our, our body. body. We can, we can place, place it on, on, on our, our mane, mane, on our, on gut. our gut, and, and then, then to, to commune, commune. We, we simply, simply mm -hmm. Again, again, of the, of the display. display. Please, Please click, click mute, mute again. again. Thank you. We are very pleased to be here with you. For us, 
art is extremely important. We think of your now as the generation that helped rewrite the roles and rules of art. For several generations before, art had become a plaything for the wealthy, a symbol of power, a sign of individualism and genius and ego. It's hard for us to imagine this in our now. Of course, the artist has gifts. It can have visions, can listen deeply and channel ideas from the world through its body. But it is always a way of coming together. In our time, we know that art has always been a form of communication, of community, of communing between us and other us's. Our message today starts with the foundation of EPAC in 2021 CE, also known as Zero CEE. -E. We want to reflect on this foundation. Many of us practice in our now. We, we are pleased. We can hear ourselves across time, but now we are here again. We are pleased to be joined with three wonderful we's. We have Ama Josephine Budge, a speculative writer, artist, curator, and pleasure activist whose praxis navigates intimate explorations of race, art, ecology, and feminism, working to activate movements that catalyze human rights, environmental evolutions, and troublesomely queered identities. Ama is the recipient of the 2020 Local, International, and Planetary Fictions Fellowship with Curatorial Frame in Helsinki and EVA International, Limerick, and will be researching the topic Pleasurable Ecologies, Formations of Care, Curation as Future Building. Ama is also a member of Queer Ecologies 2020, initiator of the Apocalypse Reading Room Project, a recipient of the 2020 Bernie Grant Micro Commission funding and lead artist on the Myco Collective project with Chisenhale Studios and Feral Practice. Then we are pleased to welcome Julieta Aranda. Julieta's artistic practice composes sensorial encounters with the nature of time and speculative literature. She observes the altering human earth relationship through the lens of technology, artificial intelligence, space travel, and scientific hypothesis. Working with installation, video, and print media, she is invested in exploring the potential of science fiction, alternative economies, and the, quote, poetics of circulation. Her projects challenge the boundaries between subject and object while embracing chance encounters, auto-destruction, and social practices. In 2006, she received her MFA from Columbia University of the Arts in New York. She had previously completed her undergraduate studies at the School of Visual Arts in Manhattan. As a co-director of the online platform EFLUX, together with Anton Bedokel, Julieta Aranda has developed the project Time Bank, Pawn Shop, and EFLUX Video Rental, all of which started in the EFLUX storefront in New York and have traveled to many venues worldwide. We have also Paulina Fedorov. Paulina is a Skolt Sami theater director, artist, and nature guardian from Kevajar on the Finnish side of Sapmi and Suanjo on the Russian side. She works multidisciplinarily to join various fields of knowledge, Sami, traditional, artistic, scientific, as a methodology in her work in theater and film, but also in political activism, such as E ecological restoration projects. Thank you, all three of you, Ama, Julieta, Paulina. We will present messages from our now to your now to consider how we can work together to once again become a we that we always are. Ama, would you like to begin?
Welcome, fellow IPAC organisms, beloved. Greetings, ancestors. It has taken so long to find a frequency your flesh minds could comprehend. We tend to overcomplicate things when dealing with interdependently defined molecular life. It's not, no, it's not, no, our natural habitat. Forgive the waterfall static. We begin with your interweb of archives. It is such a strange iteration of the way our mud mines interconnect and transfuse stories. For we did not find you in the interweb, only your ghosts. We began with your interweb archives and were greatly moved by the poetics of your scribes. That is how we first reached out to you in song and verse and lullaby. We confess ourselves to be quite fascinated with your edgeness, no, your edges, your boundaries, your binaristic distinctions between self and other, here and not here, alive and alive once or soon or always. It is not so with us. We think this makes you very beautiful, very destructive. This is why you cannot last. We spoke before of your spilling out, of your divulgence. Do you know yet that all life is interconnected across species, environs, and even worlds? Or do you keep killing all those that know this? Or perhaps we should say, do you know still? How strange it is for us to meet beings, ancestors that grow at once backwards and ahead. Apologies. We are slippages. We are waterfall statics. We struggle to be here only, now only. We slip away from ourselves and into everything else. So you are secreting. Yes, your suffering is secreting. Your potential chafing away at the boundaries between what is and what could be or what could have been. So we came, we came to offer Yes, to offer a story, two stories, all stories. Yo! We call her Asasiya. This land made up of our bone matter, blood matter, green matter, black matter. Her voice has gotten hoarse now, hoarse from screaming so loud, from protesting her roots, her fingers, her backs, her semen, her spittle, her platelets, her pores. But still, now, we listen. Generations left still to listen. Some of us collect the seeds and sow the looms, weaving otherwise into being, one thread at a time. Otherwise, other ways, we remember. We dream of it, that other place, older and newer at once. A future place? No, that is a nonsense. Here time is marked only by the growth and death of things. Only by the growth and death, not by what passes out of memory. There is no out of memory, only refusal to remember. A sase is there, and now, here, there, ever, she sings. But the rasps of your violence, your forced hand, and your foolish forgetting remain traumatizing the exquisite. We lay on a blanket of midnight stars and first time lovers that do not hurt or scare or force hold down. We are become a blanket of midnight stars and first time lovers whose cries are ecstasy or kindness or care made light, made sound, made spirit. We wake in that place with soil on our tongues and forgiveness crammed underneath our fingernails in place of anxious despair. We look back at you in this place as though through a mirror or a stagnant stinking pool tinged with decay and loss. Sometimes we want to go back to do more, to change the odds somehow, to increase your chances of making it, of re-earning your right to be on this planet, our right to be on all planets. 
Sometimes we want to go back and dance low and thighs wide until our sweat is a rivulating river of R&B and hip hop madness, wild and free and healing. Sometimes we want to come back and tell you, you are everything, you have everything, you can make it. Sometimes we believe you can. Sometimes we see the decomposition of these crutches of consumerism and dehumanization, leaving a blackened field fertilized and grieving for life. Sometimes we see the weapons lowered, the clenched fists raised, the killing stopped, and you are finally allowed to die. We are finally allowed to pass with dignity and fecundate this sacred soil, this land made up of our bone matter, blood matter, green matter, black matter. Yeah, yeah! We may be the last of the people who remember, who want to remember, who are willing to bear the agony of the remembering in our bodies. We, we may be the last of the people who can breathe underwater, who can thrive in the deserts, whose blood runs hot in the tundra and cool in the equatorial rainforest. We may be the last people, a bouquet of oracles, truth sayers, and medicine women, vessels of our nations, our lands, our everythings, our memory keepers. We may be the last people this world will permit to survive should we prove ourselves worthy. Should we prove we can change? Should we prove you can change? Can remember other ways? We commune in highlands, on mountaintops, from the roofs of swallowed skyscrapers and the arid concave mouths of canyons our ancestors remember as rivers. We commune with all that is, with each other, we coordinate. We have taken the best of technology and the crafts. We live now in abundance. In the mornings we work, we make, we transform, we cultivate, we harvest, we walk, we sing and marvel at the great beauty of our altar life, kin. In the afternoons we rest and meditate and make love to heal the wounds of our inherited souls. In the evenings, we commune and we feast and we rest some more. We live almost without waste and that which we make, we transform into art or offerings we remember. We may be the last outpost and there may not be another. Our books and our bones might be all that's left and eventually only our dust. And that will be just fine. Prem. Prem one, there is a glitch in your sound translation. Thank you, Ama. Can I be heard now? We are thankful. <laughs> we felt the thoughts communicating in other ways. Now, though, we would like to invite Julieta to communicate with us. I come here with a letter that we wrote for you. And that starts with a question. And the question is, what do you want from us? Just so you know, we are not the Lorex. We don't speak for the trees. And the reason why we don't is because nobody speaks for the trees. They speak for themselves and it is your job to listen. 
And so you are there dreaming of the future. Let me tell you a thing of two or two about dreams. Be careful of what you dream, because there are dreams that have nightmares stitched into them. The lining of first world dream futurities is a stitch with the, word, the blood of truncated presents, many of them. Do you know about inequality? Do you know who pays the price for your dreams? Excess output is the name that we give to the unexpected outcomes of, of speculative design. Casualties that are not calculated in the original ideas, but that nonetheless enter the culture and the social imaginary. Space junk was one of the most obvious excess outputs of the Cold War space race. But the excess output of your present looks different, less material, other forms. What I can tell you right now is that the future is not the excess output of the present. Now let's talk about images for a moment. In the logic of old media, temporality is color coded. 20th century, century Africa was black and white, just like Dickensian England. And Latin America was fussy and oversaturated to the point of impossible colors, like bad technicolor fields. How did that work? Well, one must remember that there are many temporalities in operation, but under the colonial image rule, the third world's present has always belonged to the first world past. And in the diffuse world of post fordist economies, all matter was placed in permanent motion and all temporalities were, were spatialized. Online, every social form got to have a second life. Everything was an image and all images were up for grabs. The space race was revived as an extension of digital incorporation, but the fantasy of a cultural totality was full of cracks. And the increasingly pervasive vectors of global communication were by far more chaotic than any Zoom room would care to suggest. The digital frontier once carried the promise of a post-political condition, free of agonism, free of struggle, an economy of abundance instead of an economy of scarcity. But so far, this dream has been nothing but a weak utopia. The frictionless space of perfect technological reception is a first world effect. The conditions in which innovation is produced have nothing to do with the conditions into which innovation is deployed. When digital space back in your time became a territory in its own right, its mapping did not happen with any kind of fidelity. The interests that tried to describe this territory were not concerned with accuracy or diversity, nor were they interested in the imaginary. These were people in Silicon Valley, a place in San Francisco. These were the topographers. In old maps, unknown lands were often inhabited by fantastical beings, sea serpents, monstrous beasts, mermaids. In the most widely circulated of the virtual world, however, digital topographers have labored to create a homogeneous landscape where a user is a user is a user, disregarding the social and cultural accidents and filling in the unknowns with replicas of the topographer themselves. Digital devices doubled as control mechanisms, their production intricately dependent on the, decimated, uh, on the decimation of the digitally underrepresented regions for rare earths for underpaid labor. And as this new geography displaced the old, the digital subject became more visible than the physical subject. While the circulation of celebrities, luxury goods, liberal professionals, artists, tourists, and financial flows occupy the field of visibility, refugees, seasonal workers, indigenous populations, immigrants, and illegal aliens were rendered invisible. So what does the future look like for those lacking digital representation? And what does it look for those who are overrepresented, the digitally obese? If the conditions under which you exist are too precarious for you to be considered a user in this, land, in this new landscape, you may be destined for extinction, or you may already be extinct, part of a barren, obsolete present that will soon be discontinued. Now, how did you experience other times? Strange fruit. A cargo boat glides across the water surface, smooth as a mirror. The ship ferries fresh exotic dreams, mostly grown in developing countries. Lychee and rambutan from Indonesia, Brazilian limes, dragon fruit from Vietnam, papayas, passion fruits, pineapples, and bananas, all glowing below decks with the sun-kissed allure of the global south. 
Logistics experts from each country of origin must adhere to strict requirements to ensure that the pallets inside the reefer containers remain free of malarial mosquitoes or traces of corruption, hunger, or civil war that could run, ru ruin the fruit. New flavors satisfy increasing demands. No compromises can be accepted when it comes to hygiene. Temperatures must be controlled. Now is the time for me to tell you something that you already know. There is no future. I cannot point you towards anything. I cannot fulfill your weak utopias. And what I mean by this is that the future cannot be designed. It is not a territory that you can conquer and plunder. It is not a place for where you can take resources. It is not any kind of space that can be approached colonially. Because if you try, we will fuck you up. Now, let's try this for a moment. You are walking on the beach. You pick up a piece of sun bleached plastic from the shore. You test it for, for legibility. You peel the brittle flakes with your fingernail, as if you were scraping a palimpsest, uncovering layers of meaning. Perhaps it was a dinosaur, you say. I would say no, it's on that plankton. Weaponized fossils. Now look again, squint your eyes just right. This thing is dead, and yet it will never die. You are holding a time piece. Diamonds last forever. You see, the future is legion. Without being able to imagine multiple temporalities, this exercise is going to be going nowhere. Yet, your imaginative capacities are currently limited to the domain of capital. This limit is a defining characteristic. <sighs> we want horizons that have real world applications. Therefore, the question of post-temporal capital, modes of escape, new modalities, the ultimate excess output, can't be bound. Um, we don't want to demand a new economic theory. We don't want to demand an ethical horizon. The way in which you imagine now has no political project. It doesn't even require oxygen for humans to survive. This might be depressing for, the, for those who demand a structural, ethic, juridical horizon for political thought, not to mention for those who like to breathe. But let's not get depressed yet. There is, there is more. I know that you are looking for reassurance, that you are in the middle of a pandemic that has brought your dreams to their knees. And in the standstill of the empty seas and the empty skies, I hope you know that you will not go back to anything normal once that this is over. Of course, things will become normalized because that is just the way that the world works. Whatever things will be, whatever normalizations will be, but you will not go back. You, can move, you cannot move through time that way. The future, there is no way to predict how any of this will be read, will be read over time. One present that we know is Southern, equatorial. Suspended time held together with bobby pins and chewing gum. Pandemic glitches and workarounds are nothing new in worlds that exist in a perpetual patchwork of imperfect infrastructure. The southern future is an impossible place where the real lived pain of people is obscured by, by foreign anecdotes of vacations and holiday, holiday photographs. This is a time register that I have never been able to leave, no matter how far away from me they travel, in time or in place. Even if geographical dislocation allows me to live in two, three, or four time zones at once, equatorial time seems to be the only temporality and futurity that really counts. And some days, when I try to imagine the world that lies ahead, I end up feeling as if there is no point to that thought exercise, because I am already there. This has nothing to do with reproduction. It's about looking towards ready-made futures and always getting a bleak picture in return. There is nothing there that looks like me. Is the future a space of possibility, or is it a resource to be deployed and exhausted? Perhaps a big part of the problem is that the colonial project of the West ran out of space. It must have been easier when the maps had blank spots and unknowns upon which to project totalizing ambitions. Without any planetary territory left to claim, and without the space being both expensive and hostile to life, the colonization of time probably appears to you like a viable alternative. The dreams capital started to extend beyond the present, turning time into something to spend where all wishes could be anticipated by algorithms. At this point of algorithmic wish fulfillment, the majority of projections of futurity in circulation 
have revealed themselves to be glaringly, glaringly insufficient. The year 2020 showed us the modest limits of human technoscientific power and the ease with which future projections can be dismantled. Yes, yes, I know, you can get another Amazon delivery tomorrow. But is that really the future? So let's try again. But instead of you letting Jeff Bezos colonize time itself, try to move into the future sideways, opening yourselves into multiple temporalities with simultaneous and possibly conflicting narratives. Oceans are acidifying and getting hot. But an apocalyptic, an apocalyptic storyline does not capture the complexity of the moment. Worlds are ending, even as new forms of flourishing become possible. Jellyfish populations are exploding with exuberance, even as coral reefs are bleaching. So while you wade into this ocean of feeling, you must remember the ongoing cascades of death and the cruelty of optimism. Some dreams are cruel because they are impossible, sheer fantasy, or because they are too possible and too toxic. Global climate change is outpacing all attempted solutions. The distributed enterprises filling the ocean with plastic seem unstoppable, at least in the short term. But even if you are powerless to prevent certain futures or even transform your present circumstances, a dystopian perspective is nothing but a trap. Dystopia is not generative. It produces passive resignation to, resignation to the unavoidable, resigning the future to fate. In times of extinction and extraction, it is time to own up to the ways that our own modes of existence are entangled with the dead and the dying. Tactical opportunities lie ahead. We can expose and derail the predictable functioning of power. Careful articulation work is needed to establish and sustain new life support systems. We can dismantle the assemblages generating double death and discover new possibilities of love and life. You can escape the monolithic and insufficient depictions of calamity and dystopia by way of modest thinking. It is time for you to address not the future, but the things that you want a future for. Individually, carefully, thoughtfully, and most importantly, with imagination. Not the future with a capital F, but the many futures. Contradictory, complex, interwoven. Thank you, Julieta, for those futures. We are very pleased. We would like to invite Paulina to also send a message to 2 1. Hello, my fellow present timers, and hello blessed and cursed ancestors. It is very seldom that we contact you fellow nations nowadays. The withdrawal decision that was made approximately 75 years ago has proven itself to be a right one. The last communications within the last 160 years that included exchange with our fellow Duha nation gave us valuable information when asking what were the major changes in your recent history that have been relevant for you. And the answer given by Tedzek's mother saying that in 1975, we cho chose to use instead of open fire, fire pits or stoves that can be carried around with our tents. That was a good change. Following that, Line, we have been actively deconstructing the past damages now for seven generation. My dear ancestors of fellow nations, what was, what is, and what has been the arts role in decentralizing, de-overtaking, 
the extracting and taking over reborn sense of ourness and belonging in the cycle of life and cycle of living beings, re-equalizing, balancing the unbalance between them and us. And most of all, firstly, waking up from the collective cult of death, the despairing, depressing, dark, sleepless sleep that connects us and makes feel that there is no world, there is no us. Only me, only mind, only reflections of an imagination that has lost the core understanding of what an imagination is. We did need advice for every I, I, I and I to get there. We borrowed, we took, studied, tried to mimic reason, build models in our mind how to connect I to I, how to be us with the water, calling it water instead of calling yaurash, yogash, akash, calling it nature, not wishing to call its hearts with their true names given to us from the beginning of us. Don't call me Raven, said the ones on the watershed times who took their part to beat the path to walk back to forests where the land was able to outoutua ja metsämiehen tulille kannusta laskeutua metsäneidon to continue the I who without any guidance kept the nerve and stayed waiting with the art available, with the tools of the art available until the raven chose to share its true name, Olen Karne. And then there were no longer an I. There was a raven, there was us. Minä ja Karne, me. And this began cross-neighboring nation. And that I and I and I began us with their surroundings. And it was not my story that I tell you now anymore. It did not destroy the art. It did not destroy the possibilities, varieties, expressions and freedoms of self, the freedoms of art can have when not expressing a lone self anymore. I and I borrowed where there was to borrow, to practice, to simulate us. Setting a time frame of teaching of how did the Nosauni or the Iraqis nations as one of their names, then was setting a time frame of seven generations for a change. It is a seven generation that carries a reasonable time span of the basis of decisions to review if this is an action us will take or not, an activity that secures us or not. As the both brilliant minds from the ancient times of yours, the Haudenosaunee Sheridan and the longboat wrote on Kwehon We, which is the unassimilated traditional Haudenosaunee, regard any assumption concerning the existence of an autonomous anthropogenic minds to be aberrations that violate the unity, interrelations and reciprocity between language and psychology, landscape and mind. The ecology of traditional territory possesses sentience that is manifest in the consciousness of that territory. And the same consciousness is formalized in and as traditional consciousness. Traditional mind, everything because everything minds traditional. Traditional minds are composed not just of visible ecological domains, but also 
by the numinous qualities of those domains that allow to nature express the fullness of traditional territory. All growth, minds and cultures, nature, emerge and encompass the old growth of their traditional territory. During a time that we still kept communing more, not just in a ceremonial manner with fellow nations, we understand that there is a wish to understand the path, what we have taken, what we have walked, I show you this is my dear and cursed ancestors. The map, our map. Of going back. First, we started with cumulative impact assessments of our forests and the situation of our lands and waters. As you can see, the time span have now reached your now, and how to take it back to this situation. We started rewilding of the forests, creating local Sami forest programs involving the whole community. We started shifting power to traditional governments And all the time, we had ongoing battles of keeping outside pressures away from other interests, other implementations of national states' needs for having the same space. The carbon sinks that we were able to create, the old growth pockets, of old growth areas that has led to creating a possibility for you to survive as well. As you see now, the damage that has been done under a hundred years, now we have recovered from that for a hundred years. And the rewilding part is about 10% of the damage has been done. And within the seventh generation to come, we expect to be a part of the damage that would looking like this. Most of our days are spent with different algaes, mushrooms, lichens, and the groundwork underneath them. We are closely collaborating with those networks and have in created proper protocols how to include them in our decision making. Dear fellow nation ancestors, I wish to greet you all and say hello to all of our fellow fellows have lived before us and wish that you will not lose your hope, lose your sanity and ability to act. We thank you, Paulina, for that moving message. So 
we come back together. We are very moved by all of these messages, all of these messages to 2021. We thank us. We also know that many of these messages, though they are the air we breathe and the way we live with us, we wonder how they translate for those of the now of 2021. We know that they have questions. We know that they have asked us questions. They've asked us first about our optimism, where we can find our optimism. And in Paulina's message, we hear this question of optimism and also how in Julieta's message, dystopia is something that we must avoid. We must see how we can act and be agents. But we first ask a basic question. From those in 2021, they ask, what do we wish, what do they wish that we knew, what do we wish our ancestors would know? What would be the things that they could do to act in their time as artists, as activists, as other generators? What could they do in their time? How could they begin is one other way we can ask this. We would say, you know, for it has already started, it has already begun, it has already been happening. This is not new knowledge, this is old knowledge. The question is not what you can do or how you can do it. It is whether or not you are willing, committed, dedicated, desiring, wanting, collectivizing, divesting enough, giving up enough, being vulnerable, afraid, humble, listening enough to do it. You have all you need. It is not a question of what, it is a question of choice. Paulina, we see that you have turned on your communications device. Len, the Len. Mun hälle som västet kan kom kosmos mänkvara mängnar som väje. That there will be losses. There will be tremendous losses. There will be losses of areas. There will be losses of cultures. And there will be losses of lots of human population. But there will be also seeds. And securing those seeds is crucial. Uh, it's, and the basis line of securing those seeds is that leaving alone the old growth areas globally, wherever, globally and locally, wherever the seed of an old growth area is, there's a potential of regrowth, re-learning, 
rerouting to a place. And the places where their old growth areas already have been damaged. There's always a possibility for creating, re restore, restoring, creating new nature, creating new places and creating new relationships in those. Because there is no land on ideas and there is no ideas without land. And if in this time of yours, the tool to spend more time with the river or a forest or a community that is rooted on that rivers or waters or seas, if you are not yourself, if the tool to spend time with that, to defend the people's right to be with that core area, to protect her is art, so be it. And if that's the way to come closer within that generation that you are living it, let it be. And same time, let the land change you because the, a worldview that cannot be rooted into practices, into living bodies, is hanging on the air and it is a cause of distraction and unclear focus. And I would also wish to add that it is meaningless or to be more precise, unsafe to speak about the endemic qualities of communicating with nature, the land, if we do not address the mechanisms that have for a long period of time interfered with that communication uh, until the point of extinction. And in, in this time of ecological and existential crisis, you cannot cherry pick for instance, indigenous cosmological practices in a philosophical, artistic or theoretical way. If we are to go there, then we have to undo the damage as well. That has been made to those practices are mostly the lands that are the source of all that knowledge. And the question is then, how do I do it? And with who then? The one last thing to add is that um, time waits for no one, right? So if you cannot build a better future unless you put the effort in building a better present, you cannot think that in 140 years, things are going to go well. If you are not trying to protect the nature cities, if you're not trying to make sure that there are, that to stop the flow of inequality that is currently so rampant, it's not going to magically solve itself just because 140 years pass. So as long as there are children taking swigs of gasoline and spitting fire, in corners in Brazil, I cannot dream of a better future because I want, to, I want you to think of fixing that present, not dream of the future. I think once you have taken care of that, you can move along and dream further. What we hear also in the messages is the question of connectedness, of relation, and of the interconnectedness of many of these questions. What we've heard also in your message, Paulina, now is also the direct involvement or engagement with the land, something that also we know that some in the present of 2021 also would acknowledge. We do have the question, so many of these things to those who exist in an individualistic society, one which has not yet recognized those interconnections. Many of those who see themselves as eyes and not yet as we's, they may 
feel that they must act alone, that they are individual actions. Yet we also know that many of the challenges faced in 2021 are not only questions of individual action, are not at all questions of individual action, but questions of large actors, of states, of corporations, of those things that once were. How is it that the artist, how can the artist, how can it actually influence those larger actors? Should it, can it, or must it start first from another scale, the scale of the smaller we? Uh, if that question was addressed for me or someone else, but I could shortly give you an answer around 170 years back. My ancestor in a matriarchal line started using uh, her artistic networks to collect in resources to combine natural science with traditional knowledge holders. And the use that knowledge that artists have on getting over the posing self. When we are talking about colonized uh, societies, even it would be the colonized or the colonizer, both have very strict roles. The one is the oppressor and the one is oppressed. And there's a lockdown of information. Both are holding back their own information. The colonized, whether it be the indigenous peoples or the local peoples, they are holding back the information that they have in the first hand on the land because they feel that if the information is shared, it's only used against of them. And the one who are the colonizers, they are holding back the information. Why are they gathering this information? Because they have mega projects going on, they have their own infrastructure plans they, that they, they don't wish to share. Because in a fair that if we share and open this uh, to a real dialogue, those plans would be opposed. So those roles are almost impenetrable. And having a background in my ancestral matriarchal line of studying performative arts, of breaking that uh, official role and getting to a connection that there are other ways of speaking, there are other ways of communicating. And also that even when collaborating with science, there are songs, there can be stories, there are so many different ways of proving your what you are seeing and proving that there are other speakers than us human beings. And somehow that collaboration that we took over in our ancestral line ended up in a situation that we were able to first collect uh, evidence of a climate change. At the same time, there was all the time small scale community building that how to be functioning human beings, starting with the culinary workshops of getting in touch with your emotions, organizing small scale of group therapy, or speaking how to be a woman in a very patriarch patriarchal suppressing system. Always trying to find a way to break those roles that were given from the ups top down, somehow to break those roles and pour some life to people that are constantly uh, hindered from living and being full, them full selves. And then when the scientists came first having this very, very long dialogue to convey the scientists that traditional knowledge also has a role. And when that dialogue was done and the scientists 
and traditional knowledge, uh, knowledge owners were not opposites, but com com not competing, but completing ways of knowing. And when the arts know of understanding how human soul and how human spirit and the human body are able to um, hide themselves, hide their true meanings, and how we can deconstruct uh, that hiding process, that people would actually be bare and open to uh, dialogue, even though knowing that that dialogue doesn't necessarily end up in a very short term uh, getting the unequal situation more balanced. And, and that collaboration took, took place and, and then starting to film and in strengthen all the time the core group and the core from the inside and at the same time all the time campaigning the obstacles outside, whether it be government, whether it be the markets, whether it be uh, global pulp companies, that was doable. But it started from creating the us, sense of us from the individuals and then from, and keeping those circles very concrete and tight. And within 20 to 30 decades, we were able to start taking the language back because the language, traditional languages is the key to communicate with the real land. And traditional languages and its vocabulary gives you the access and the key of unlocking the language, of getting to the right protocol of communicating with the land. And that process took over something like 50 years. And when the grandchildren of the worst first ones started to be that strong, then started the detachment process because the, uh, the, the communication between the larger society and our society was not possible. And therefore we choose to withdraw and maybe within seven generations to come, a new possibility for a dialogue is possible. We don't know that yet. Um, and the structural ongoing war that you all are living now in your 2021, there's an ongoing war on resources and you're all part of that. It's still ongoing, but we have secured our area by very rough, by making very rough decisions of withdrawal and campaigning almost for a hundred years before that. There's something here in this question about scale um, and the kind of binaries of state level and interpersonal level. It's really important to remember that states are run by individuals, small groups. Those groups have families, those groups have children, those groups have friends and uncles, those groups read books, those groups go to the theater. These are not people who live in actual glass houses removed from society. So it has to happen at all levels. Should art, can art have a say? My question is, where are we if art doesn't have a say? Where are we if artists aren't deeply entrenched and entangled up with the ontologies and epistemologies and possible futures of being? Where are we? Where are we left? Nowhere that I want to be. And I think there's really, it's a, it's a really, it's a, um, I think you call it in your time, a red herring. It is a distraction, this idea of individual, individualism. These global systems that you're, you're dealing with, capitalism, patriarchy, neocolonialism, are codependent mycelial networks. They are using the ecological systems all around them to learn how to sustain themselves, how to be codependent. You don't have any of these systems, white, suprem white supremacy, ableism, patriarchy, homophobia, transphobia, anti-blackness. These political systems cannot exist in isolation without one another. It is you who seem to not understand 
that you also cannot live in isolation without one another. That's the great lie of these systems, that you are individuals. You're interconnected all the time. You take an, a deep breath now. You're breathing in millions of microbes. You're exhaling zillions of microbes. You're impacting the room all around you. You're impacting the people on this call. You're impacting the, the, the children and babies that come into your lives, whether you pass them on the street or whether they've come out of your bodies. And so art has to happen at all levels, but this is what I'm talking about, commitment and choice. It's a, it's a choice. I, I, I really agree with, with the iteration of us that is Paulina here, that it is you cannot cherry pick I'm going to commit on this one level. I'm going to commit to not driving a car, but I'm still going to hire only white cis men in roles in my, in my company. It doesn't work that way. And similarly, art has to be had in conversation with your parents, with your colleagues, with your children. And then it also has to be had on a state level, but those two things are interconnected. You know, if you make theater for children, some of those children might be the children of the presidents and prime ministers of the future. And that piece of theater that they come to see can radically shift their entire worldview. There is such a scarcity of what you believe is possible and that you believe that you're isolated. So it's really about looking around and recalibrating the resources that you have because so much has been done with far less resources. The movements that we look to, that we draw from, that we're inspired by, were not done with sick pay and maternity leave and uh, two or three parent households. That is not what they were um, fueled by. So what are the resources that you have and what are the choices that you're making to, to do with them? And who are you willing to ally with, even if you are not always on the same page? Where, where is that meeting point and what are you willing to do to get there? Thank you, Ama. We want to make sure that if the we known as Julieta, also would like to add anything. We also hear a reference to questions of withdrawal before and the digital divide, but we want to give space also to Julieta to contribute. I can pass on this round of contributions. Okay. Um, we do see <laughs> One thing we want to say then also to Ama, we, uh, we very much, uh, this resonates as well. There is the question that art, as it was called in 2021, it achieved such proximity to power. When we hear of children of people in powerful positions seeing a play or encountering the thing called culture back then, we are reminded by how that is the odd thing of art's elite status in that moment is its proximity to all of those different social strata and levels and the potential for interference. Um, we know that there are also questions from, the, the, from 2021. Some of them are about even whether art would exist separately from other disciplines or whether art might be redefined. We understand that even in 2021, some people, even in organizations like what was called IPCC, understand art perhaps as painting or as photographs, as objects, um, perhaps in a different way than art might be seen now. Um, I wonder if there's any, any uh, comments on this question. Um, it, can, I, uh, can you hear me? Um, I'm always a little bit um, confused when I see art addressed as such. Um, 
because I think that's a problem that comes from from seven generations ago, the idea that it was possible to outsource the solution of social conflicts onto artists instead of politicians, so that artists would have to solve housing crisis, climate change, um, scarcity and inequality. Artists, I have always believed, can point at the best possible questions, not necessarily the best possible answers. They can contribute to the answers, but it's not their job. So art by by now has a different role. The, the idea that prevailed in 2021, that art had this uh, uh, function was dangerous because it's equivalent as asking plumbers to perform heart surgeries. They may have the best intentions, they may not have the best tools. Thank you. We know that with these means of communication, we also have a limited duration. These messages are very difficult to produce. So we know that there may be those from what we might call the past or from 2021 who would like to communicate with us as well. We want to then thank all of us before we transition to the next phase and then come back again for a broader discussion where we will try to bridge these different moments to speak with others. Thank you so much, Prem. Can you all hear me from your respective futures? We believe you are trying to speak, Bruno, but yes, we believe that you are muted. I believe you can hear me now from your respective futures, correct? Thank you so much. 